Welcome back to Cottage Designs by Erin, where today we are going to be working on a log cabin baby quilt using the So Emma foundation piece paper system. And these will make six inch blocks. So I worked on this last night and I was able to get three or four blocks finished. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that and how to appropriately use these papers. First thing when they come, the inside has the directions on how to use them. And the other page shows you how many packages of these you would need to complete the coordinating size. So a wall hanging, you would need 16 blocks. A crib quilt, 36 blocks. So there are 42 sheets in here. So there's more than enough to make a crib quilt. A lab quilt, lap quilt, quilt you would need 80 blocks, large lap quilt 144, twin 140, queen 225, and king size 289. So depending on however many blocks you need that's how many packages you would have to buy. So then when you open to your first page your block is going to look like this. It's numbered and half of it's dark and half of it's light, showing you how to put your fabric in order. I'm gonna rip the sheet off. I have this little block finished from last night. I'm making a baby quilt for my daughter's best friend. Okay, and then I am using, <laughs> This is a lot of fabric. Wait till you see this. I am using all of this wad of fabric, most of which is by Riley Blake. So where did I get that and, and what's going on with that? Uh, I work with a lady who has twin daughters. Her mother is a quilter. The little girls are now grown up and have gone to college. And so her mother donated all this fabric to me. And I mean, I was more than thrilled. This is a very expensive mound of fabric here. So that's what we're going to be using. I spent time last night cutting it into inch and a half strips. So you can see we have all this pattern in here. Now, if you use the bigger package of 12 inch blocks, you will use two and a half inch strips. So I'm going to move the camera to my hands now, and I'll bring my sewing machine up, and we'll go ahead and get started, and I'll show you how to do this. I put in the center of each block an orange polka dot, and that does help the pattern design to stand out. So on the back of this, I'm going to measure an inch and a half, which is more than enough for what I need. I'm trying to see where I can put this block where we can see it here. We're well, probably not going to be able to and have workroom. All right, so you never start sewing, I shouldn't say that, you never start your placement on the numbered side of the pattern. You're going to flip it over and you're going to start your placement on the back side. So I'm going to lay this polka dot right in the center over the one. Then I'm gonna take a little pin and I'm going to pin it down. Next, I need the two, and the two is light colored. We know that because it's light colored on this side of the pattern. So I'm using this polka dot fabric for the light. So I'm going to lay this down where the two is at. When you put this piece down, it has to hang over at least by a quarter of an inch 
on either side in order for it to be locked into the next seam allowance. I'm just going to cut that off bigger than what I need. Okay, let me take my pin out and reposition it. So now we are ready to sew, flipping it over. You are going to sew between the one and the two. You can hold it up to the light to make sure that you have both pieces of fabric in this seam allowance. Okay, you need to set your stitch length on a tighter stitch. So mine is on a one and a half. Now, and you also need an open toe foot so that you can see as you're guiding the paper through. Now we're going to put this down. Let me switch over to a flat, a flat quilting pen. It was a little bit easier. Yesterday, I ran over a pen. I mean, I sewed right through the flower top. So make sure your pen is out of your seam allowance. Okay, so we are now going to sew on the little line between the one and the two, which is right here. You're going to sew from here to here. And I like to get it on the line and then take a step to pierce it before I really get to move in here because I want to make sure that I get it exactly in the spot it's supposed to be in. You do not have to back stitch. Okay, you're going to pull it up and cut off your strings. Now you are going to open that piece and fold it back and that gives you your first section. I'm going to take my little ironing board and my handy dandy iron and I'm going to press that. Next we are on piece two, piece, I mean three, piece three, piece three is still in the white portion of the design. So we are going to lay piece three this direction. Again, you want to have overhang on either side. Hold your piece up to the light and make sure that all of your pieces extend beyond your seam allowance. So now we are going to sew on the line for number three because that's the piece we're on. Try that again.
Oh, and I got my feet piece caught in my got the tail caught in, so we're gonna have to rip that out. Okay, and you're gonna make mistakes, so just roll with it. All right, now we're going to press that seam open. Now we are on piece four. Piece four is back on the dark side of the design. So I am using a green on piece four. cut it off way down here because I know it's not going to be that long. Now we are going to push it through the machine on piece four. This goes really quickly once you have your uh, pieces cut out. Okay, take your pen out and fold it back. And then press. We are still on the dark side. And now we're going to add piece five, which is also a green. We're going to sew up number five. Okay, now if you notice, our layers are getting kind of thick. So, I'm going to fold that back and press it, making sure that we extend into the seam allowance. You always want to be a quarter inch into the next seam allowance. cut this off way back there. All right. Before I go on to number six, I can press my paper back. It would actually be this direction. 
and I could trim off whatever is beyond a quarter of an inch. I don't have a lot there, so I'm just gonna leave it. So we are back on the white side of the design and we are doing number six over here. like putting a paint by color puzzle together. press it. Cut my overhang off down here on the end. I saved my little scraps in case I want them for something later. Okay, now we're going to number seven, which is also in the white part of the design. down far enough. They say that if you have a new machine that has the automatic thread cutting, that it's even better. Okay, so now I'm going to fold this back. And press it. And then I'm gonna cut this overhang off off the end of the paper because clearly I'm not gonna go off the end of the paper. Now we are on block eight, which is back into the dark side of the pattern. So we are doing yellow for that side. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, why am I holding that up? Because I'm trying to make sure that we do have a quarter of an inch above and beyond to attach. 
I was holding it up to the light because I can see with the ring light where it's located, kind of like using a light box. We, now we're going to do number nine. Nine is on the dark side, and we're going right down the middle. Stay with me. We only have a few more strips to go, and then I'll show you what the finished block, how you know where to cut on the finished block. Oh, for heaven's sakes, I put that piece on upside down. This should have been down here. Okay, let me stop the camera and I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. So I fixed that little boo-boo. So one of the things you need to think is when you put your strip down, you have to visualize flipping that over to make sure that it is actually going the right direction. I sewed on the wrong of the strip. So now let me move the camera back to my hands. So we're going to have a block, and it might look a little weird, like you might have a tail cut, not, you know, hanging off on the side. You're going to cut that off. Then when your block is finished, you're going to take some paper scissors. And I like these Pioneer Woman scissors from Walmart. They're really, really sharp, and they work great. It says on here, do not trim on this line. Trim on this line. So you're going to go around... And you're going to cut these down to the second line. It feels pretty thick in some spots. Remember not to do this with your fancy sewing shears.
Okay, and then when you do that, you will end up with this, okay? And that will be your finished block. Let me see if I got that even. I could trim a little more off, looks like. Just a smidge, just a smidge. So that gives us this block. Now, let's look at possible arrangements for this. The pattern itself is showing everything going the same color, same direction. Okay, so there's that design. Or if you make a lot of blocks, you can't do this on the baby quilt unless you add more to it because it will screw the design up. But you could do like, I like this design. So it's all about placement. There's several different design options. So now let me raise the camera back up. You can buy these So Emma foundation papers in my online Amazon store. You can also buy Guggenheim shears there. You can buy the Friskers. You can buy the pink iron. All of this is in my online Amazon store and that link will be in the description box. I hope you enjoyed my video. These are very inexpensive unless you get the big 12 inch size. The 12 inch size blocks um, I think are almost $13 each, but these are much cheaper. So please like and subscribe and come back for more ideas in the future. I greatly appreciate my audience and I hope that you are learning new skills by watching me. Have a great day.